welcome to Water Bear Reads, where I chat about illustrated classics and modern classics and so much more. My name is Heather, welcome. Today I am going to share my collection of illustrated, mostly illustrated, Christmas books with you all, holiday books really, because a couple of the picture books are Hanukkah related. My collection includes chapbooks and picture books, Christmas story collections, and well-known Christmas classics. I have a graphic novel as well to show you. I'm very excited to share it with you. Before I get started, I wanted to also show you a couple of things um, that I picked up recently at Anthropology. We went to New York this past weekend and it was really great because people were um, starting to buy their Christmas trees so we saw a lot of families um, walking through the streets with their Christmas trees. Um, and then they also had the Christmas tree at Rockefeller Center was up but they were busy decorating it. They had scaffolding around it so they could reach the top parts and it was lovely to watch people ice skating. There was already holiday songs everywhere and it was just really nice. So every year I pick up a couple of plates from Anthropology. They have these 12 days of Christmas plates and every year is a different artist. And this year is a contemporary Thai artist. Her name is Panapate Chai Matakul, I think. I hope I got that right. She has this wonderful whimsical style. I was reading that she incorporates art from generations of her family, from her family history, and she brings it into her art. This year I selected the five golden rings, and that looks to be a jaguar, I think. And then I also selected the six geese a lamb. So those are the two that I decided on this year. I look forward to anthropology putting out their new plates every October, because they usually put them out sometime in October, maybe a little earlier. That's just when I get around to noticing them. It's one of my favorite things about the holiday season is getting my plates. There was another thing I wanted to show you guys. I cross-stitched this Christmas stocking for my son and it took me a while, but I finished it last year. There's a skyscraper for him and it has a couple of other things in it that he really loves. So let's get into the book. Grab yourself a warm beverage of your choice and I'll take a sip and we'll get started. I'm gonna start with the Christmas classics and I'll begin with the book that I most recently purchased and that is Miracle on 34th Street by Valentine Davies, um, illustrated by Tommy DePaola. We read this last year and loved it. It was such a fast read. It had a wonderful message and it was just very sweet and heartwarming. And I highly recommend it if you haven't read it yet. Tommy DePaola is a well-known illustrator. He does the Streganona book. And I believe the paternal side of his family is Italian, but he was actually born in Connecticut. And yeah, I think he's illustrated over 260 books I was reading in his life and I see his work everywhere and I love it. It's so different, it's very unique. Let me show you a couple of them. I just wanted to show you the frontispiece because I thought that was lovely. Here's a float from the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. I also wanted to show you how every chapter begins with a little illustration at the beginning. I think it's so darling. So here's a gingerbread house, a couple of gingerbread looking houses anyway. Here's another one. The next book I would like to share with you is A Christmas Carol. The Christmas Carol that I wanted to show you is from Litjoy and I bought it last year and it's illustrated by Catalan artist Monse Rubio. I love the illustrations and this little book is so wonderful. It has gilded edges and look at these amazing end papers. Bah humbug, I love it. <laughs> it has tons of illustration. It has full page spreads, there's Marley, and then full page illustration. So yeah, it's just a beautiful version. And there you can see on the back, it's written, I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. The next book I wanna share with you is The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus by Frank Baum. And this one is illustrated by Michael Haig, who I've talked about a lot on this channel before. He's one of my favorite illustrators. It starts with the birth of Santa Claus and then follows him throughout his life and explains how he got into toy making and explains how he got into wanting to give gifts to children and then how he attained immortality at the very end and it's just a lovely book it's definitely a fantasy it's got all the fantasy elements in it we both really enjoyed it the thing that stuck out the most was this book predates lord of the rings the hobbit but it had that fantasy feel where there's orcs and elves and hobbits but instead of those 
types of characters. They have reels and fairies and nymphs and something called aguas. And there's even this great war that it, during one of the chapters occurs between some of the different groups of fantasy beings. When we finished reading it, my son just gave me this huge hug because it was just such a amazing read for him at the time. It also explains how Santa gets down chimneys nowadays because chimneys have changed, <laughs> how they're different now. There are several illustrated versions of this one that I've seen out there, and there are some really pretty ones as well, but I just like the Michael Haig one. Just to give you an idea of some of the illustrations, they're just amazing and adorable. This one on this page. Not all of the pictures in this version are color. Some of them are just a uh, one color full page. And I love that one that goes across the top with all the toys. Here's another one. Here's the illustration I told you about where he's uh, learning how to get through some of the types of chimneys that he comes across. The next book I wanted to share with you is E.T.A. Hoffman's The Nutcracker. I love this version. It is so beautiful. We read this book a couple of Christmases ago and I was utterly enchanted. Maurice Sandak illustrates this version. Um, you'll know him from Where the Wild Things Are, of course. And he was actually the set designer for a Seattle-based production of The Nutcracker. And then he took the artwork from the stage and he converted it into a picture book. So when you're reading this one, you can get a little bit confused towards the end because some of the artwork doesn't quite line up with what's happening in the story. And that's because the actual stage production is based on the Dumas version, which I plan to read this Christmas. Let me show you a couple of the illustrations. First of all, there's these beautiful end papers on the inside, which are just glorious. They're so nice. I love this border around the table of contents. And Christmas tree. Ah, the seven-headed mouse king. I really love this page too. All the dancers. This is one of my favorite pages. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? And then it has tons of little spot illustration as well, like this all, all throughout the book. And by the way, I'll put links to all these books in my description box. I wanted to show you guys this because it has one of the monsters from Where the Wild Things Are in it. So yeah, Highly recommend E.T.A. Hoffman's The Nutcracker. It gave me such an amazing feeling after I read it. It's probably one of my favorite books that I've ever read during the holidays just because it made me so happy. The final Christmas classic I want to show you is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And I have it in this collection. My mother-in-law organized with family to bring it from the UK one Christmas and gave it to me and I love it so much. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is the third story in here and it's really just a delightful read. Another one that makes me so happy. Pauline Baines was a favorite, not only of C.S. Lewis, but also of Tolkien. And she actually illustrated a couple of his works, uh, Tom Bombadil and Bilbo's Last Song. I thought that was interesting. That book is a segue into our picture books. So now I'm going to show you our picture books. The first picture book I want to show you is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, illustrated by Tudor Humphreys. This is such a beautiful version. I really love it. Tudor Humphreys is a British illustrator who was quite active in stage design and you can really see it in how he pays attention to light in his paintings. Let me show you a couple. Here's where Lucy meets Tumnus. So pretty. Where Edmund is getting his Turkish delight. Here's the scene with Santa, which is such a wonderful scene. And I think this page is so beautiful. The next book is a real classic in our house because we love the Moomins. And the book I want to show you is Christmas Comes to Moomin Valley. They're so adorable, so cute, and just so fresh. And the stories are so wholesome. And lately, I've been seeing more and more Moomins in Barnes and Nobles. And that's where I found this. And it's about the Moomin. They wake up from their winter hibernation and Christmas is happening. And there's all these traditions happening and they have no idea what Christmas is. What is this thing, this Christmas thing? Should we, should we protect ourselves? What's coming? It's just a charming book about the Moomins discovering what Christmas is. And I love these illustrations by Philippa Wittlund who took special care to illustrate it in a style that was true to Tove Janssen. Here's one of the illustrations. I, they're just so charming. Here's another one. I love that one. And my favorite of all, 
Isn't that beautiful? This book is adapted from Tova Janssen's The Fir Tree, and the book that it appears in, we have not read that one yet. It's actually on our list to read this December. Love the Movement, The Twelve Days of Christmas, illustrated by Spanish illustrator Angel Dominguez. And I love his work. I collect most of his classics. It's just a wonderful, whimsical take on the 12 days of Christmas. It has a little bit of a funky thing that happens at the end. In this version, it's 11 ladies dancing and 12 lords a leaping, which it's usually different. <laughs> the illustrations are just lovely. Look at the partridge. Love these red squirrels. We have a red squirrel that moved in to the tree across from us. He's adorable and he holds his own with the gray squirrels, let me tell you. <laughs> they try to bully him around, or maybe it's a she. They try to bully that red squirrel around and he or she is not having it. I love how they did the eight maids of milking too with, with little pigs. I thought that was pretty cool. And finally, here they are. I love the frogs. The lords are leaping, which are the, the frogs. So yeah, it's just a wonderful little version of the 12 Days of Christmas. I highly recommend it, especially for the young ones. The Polar Express by Chris von Alsberg. And you'll know Chris von Alsberg from uh, Jumanji. And this is just one of those stories that you just have to have in your house. It's a reminder to always be young and to always believe and find joy. And yeah, it's gorgeous. One of my favorite pages. I just love that page. Another really well-known Christmas classic is of course The Grinch Who Stole Christmas and I have it in this book, which is your favorite Seuss 13 best love stories with essays by Stan and Jan Bernstein, Christopher Paolini, Pete Seeger, Lane Smith, and more. And it has the Grinch inside with a little essay on the true spirit of the Grinch. We leave this one out all year round, but we tend to not read the Grinch. It has most of the great ones in it. My mom gave this to my son as a baby gift because she learned to read through Dr. Seuss. Speaking of learning to read, I also wanted to share this reader that my son really enjoyed and it's the Poppleton at Christmas. The Poppleton books are so charming and they came as a recommendation from my sister-in-law and so we picked up a few of them and they are just adorable. It's just about the day-to-day -day life of Poppleton and his friend Cherry Sue and Fillmore and Hudson the Mouse. There's three stories in here and for example the first story Poppleton takes his jar of coins to the store to buy Christmas gifts for his friends but by the time he gets to his third friend, Cherry Sue, he no longer has enough money to afford what he wants to get her. So the store manager comes up with this really wonderful plan and it was just so sweet and it just brings a smile to your face. The illustrations are adorable. Here's Poppleton heading into the store. My son has aged past this level but we still keep this one because it is just such a sweet story to read at christmas time i have a couple of picture books that are hanukkah related and the first one is just one of the most wonderful books and it is oscar and the eight blessings and it's about a boy who escapes the political climate of europe in the years leading up to world war ii and he comes to Manhattan and the goal is to find his aunt who lives there. And he walks the entire length of Manhattan. He doesn't have any money. He has to just walk to her house. And on the way, he passes people who help him out or show him kindness. And the overall message of the book is just that even when times might be a little bit dark, there's still so much kindness that people can show. It's illustrated by Mark Siegel. Here's one of them. As he's walking along, someone hands him a comic book. And, and I just love how it shows his eyes and what it means to him. And then at the end, it actually has a map of Manhattan. It's one of our holiday favorites. Another Hanukkah story that we have that we just love around here is by Patricia Palacco, The Trees of the Dancing Goats. And this is such a beautiful story about looking after your neighbors I have to read you the first bit of the story. At our farm, just outside Union City, Michigan, we didn't celebrate the same holidays as most of our neighbors, but we shared their delight in anticipation of them just the same. Patricia Polacco illustrates all her own book. I wish I could just make an entire collection of her works. They are just so beautiful. Her artwork is stunning. All their neighbors come down with scarlet fever and they don't have enough energy to really care about celebrating Christmas. So what this family does is they go out and they find Christmas trees, little Christmas trees, and they decorate them with these wooden dancing goats that Grandpa makes. And then on Christmas Eve, they deliver the 
trees with the dancing goats to their neighbors and brighten up their Christmases. And it's just so touching and it really is just a wonderful book about how people are just people wherever you are and kindness towards your neighbors. It's just lovely. I highly recommend this one. It's a real classic around this house. There is one more Hanukkah book that we really enjoy, but we listen to it on Storyline online and it's uh, Hanukkah in Alaska. And I'll put the link to it in the description box. I have one graphic novel to share with you and I picked up this graphic novel at San Diego Comic Con. The Nutcracker and the Mouse King by Natalie Andrewson. It makes a perfect Christmas Eve gift because you can enjoy the tradition of reading on Christmas Eve, but it's graphic novel so you can get it done in one evening. And I love that. So every Christmas Eve we read The Nutcracker and The Mouse King. And by the way, this is based on the E.T.A. Hoffman version. It's a wonderful sort of beautiful fever dream of magic in this graphic novel. By the way, I wanted to show you guys on the back. It has the little nutcracker. But let me show you a couple of the interior, the end paper here and under the dust jacket there's another nutcracker which I think is just so cute. Here's the title page and then the uh, table of content but there's the little doodle she did. <laughs> Look at these illustrations aren't they beautiful? Here's another one. They're just very eye-catching. And lastly it's a really beautiful fun way to read the nutcracker and to help um, any kids who struggled reading the real Nutcracker to help them understand what was going on. Last year we went to see the Nutcracker um, ballet. I took my son to see it for the very first time and he took this book with him and read it while he was waiting for it to begin and then also again during um, intermission and it was a, just a great way to explain a little bit of what's happening. Now of course the Nutcracker Ballet is based on the Dumas version apparently, so I will tell you more when I read that. <laughs> it's just a lovely version. I highly recommend this one. So now I want to tell you about some Christmas story collections. And the first ones I want to show you are actually the only unillustrated books in this video. And they are the Sterling Publishing Signature Select Classic Chapbooks series. My local bookstore sells these and they're just so wonderful. I've bought one or two every year and I finally completed the series this year. I purchased Christmas with O. Henry and Christmas with Hans Christian Andersen. But before that I had Christmas with Louisa May Alcott. Aren't they beautiful? Christmas with Ellen Montgomery and Christmas with Charles Dickens. Yaren Tong does the cover art for these chapbooks and she is based in the UK but she was born in Korea. If you are a collector of the 40th anniversary Virago um, modern classic series, she does many if not all of the cover artwork for that series as well. So I just had to show you these because they're just beautiful. And the Hans Christian Andersen, I wanted to just chat about to show you which ones are in here. The Fir Tree, The Snowman, The Little Match Girl, and The Last Dream of the Old Oak. They're at a great price point and they look so beautiful on the coffee table or maybe at place settings when you're having your Christmas dinner. Love this series so much. I wanted to share with you a couple of the vintage Cricut magazines that I have that are from December. I have the December 1977 edition, the December 1973, this would have been the very first holiday edition, and the second holiday edition that came out would be December 1974. Paging through them, they have the most charming stories. Here is the December 1974's Table of Contents. Isn't it beautiful? And here's another one that I thought is so pretty. I wanted to tell you about this one especially because it has this beautiful poem by Walter de la Mare, The Snowflake. And then on the other side is Mr. Edwards meets Santa Claus. I love this story from Little House on the Prairie. It's just one of my favorite chapters in the book. I thought it was just wonderful. And what's even more wonderful is it's illustrated by Trina Short Hyman. So usually Garth Williams is the illustrator. And then it has an article by Pamela Travers, How Did Mary Poppins Find Me, where she talks about how she came up with Mary Poppins. And it's just amazing. I love it. That's in the December 1973, the very first version. The final one from 1977 also has a wonderful table of contents. One of the things that I thought was so cool about this one 
is it has part three of The Fossil Snake by Lucy M. Boston. Lucy M. Boston is, of course, the author of The Children of Green Know. And then it has the section, Meet Your Author, Lucy M. Boston. And in the section, she says, Many people dislike snakes, but I lost that feeling as a child when I read Kipling's Jungle Books. There is in them an unforgettable, friendly snake. And she's talking about Ka, which is funny because in my last video I was talking about Ka as well. I fell in love with this selection of Charles Dickens' Christmas stories because the cover art by Emily Sutton was just so beautiful. I was under the impression that it was unillustrated. I think that my mom got this for me for Christmas and she knew I wanted it. And then when I got it, I was so excited because I discovered that there are actually illustrations inside. Not many. There's um, an illustration to mark the beginning of each um, section as well as within the sections, a title illustration um, for each story. It, they're charming. The stories in here include Charles Dickens' Christmas stories, also from Pickwick Papers, as well as Household Words, which was a magazine that Charles Dickens edited. Let me show you a couple of illustrations here. So here's from the Pickwick Papers, and then the section, the Christmas books. That would include A Christmas Carol and Cricket on the Hearth, the first book in of A Christmas Carol. Here's the Cricket on the Hearth, that little cricket there. I thought that was cute. And then later on, we get to the household words section from A Round of Stories by the Christmas Fire. I really enjoy having this book. I have yet to actually break into it and start reading it, but I just am so happy to own it and to have it on my shelves for when I do eventually get into it and start reading it. So. It's just so pretty. Emily Sutton's artwork, wow, it's just stunning. One of my absolute favorite collection of Christmas stories that I've ever came across, my mom also purchased this for me at Barnes and Nobles, and it's A Christmas Carol and Other Christmas Tales. And it's just wonderful. It has Christmas stories from Ellen Montgomery and Louisa May Alcott and Washington Irving, and of course, Charles Dickens, and it has The Night Before Christmas as well, and The Nutcracker and the Mouse King. And they are all illustrated by classic illustrators as well. So we have R. Caldecott in here, we have um, Jesse Wilcox Smith, we have Arthur Rackham, to name but a few. And just such a delight to read the books illustrated this way. Look at these end papers, aren't they just beautiful? Here's from A Christmas Carol, and th these illustrations are by Arthur Rackham. All the pictures and illustrations in them are also embellished with beautiful holly and poinsettia and evergreen and berries all throughout the books, just to add it that little extra bit of uh, daintiness and beauty. Gilded edges, and by the way, this beautiful back cover, look at that. Yes, it's really just a treasure of my collection. I love this book so much. And here's A Visit from St. Nicholas by Clement C. Moore and illustrated by Jesse Wilcox Smith. Those classic illustrations are just wonderful. Speaking of Jesse Wilcox Smith, I also have her Night Before Christmas. In this version, the final book I want to show you guys, A Treasury of Wintertime Tales, published by Taschen, and it is an extraordinary book. It has vintage Christmas tales as well as just winter themed stories, um, as well as stories from other places in the world. One of the stories is about the Chinese New Year or the Lunar New Year, and the other one surrounds the Mexican pre-Christmas tradition of La Posadas. And it's just such a wonderful book. Every tale is illustrated by a different illustrator whose bios are all in the back and they're pretty substantial and I love that about it as well. But here you can see all the stories are on the back here and they're just gorgeous. You have the end papers. Tashin really makes a, a beautiful book. Isn't that gorgeous? Here's Cowboy Christmas, which is the newest story in the book. I think it was written in 1972. The oldest one is The Night Before Christmas, which was 1822. This is a story about the um, event that's celebrated in Mexico, La Posadas. Look at these beautiful illustrations. They're just so pretty. This one especially. This is really funny because I just finished reading Remarkably Bright Creatures and the Dalla horse is mentioned in Remarkably Bright Creatures. So I thought that was kind of cool that I opened it up and saw it. Here's the 12 days of Christmas. Isn't that gorgeous? The Lunar New Year or the Chinese New Year. Beautiful. And that's from the De Olaires, Children of the Northern Lights. These illustrations the, uh, from the final story are just so beautiful. 
Well, that is it. I hope you have enjoyed my collection of Christmas and holiday books. If you've watched to the end of this video, thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful start to your uh, December and you enjoy the holiday season. And I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.